Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming or Battlefield related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the formalities out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from Dickbutt. Staying classy, and it is, what do you think about rewarding more points for harder kills? The score for each kill will depend on what you killed and what you killed it with. So if you kill a jet with an RPG, you'll get more points than if you kill a tank with an RPG. I think this will give a greater incentive to use the skill-based weapons in the game over the annoying new weapons. Well, at its surface, this sounds like a pretty awesome idea. Who wouldn't want more points for pulling off one of these amazing maneuvers? It's not easy to use an RPG to take out a jet, let alone a helicopter. None of these kills are easy by any means. And if DICE rewarded us a couple hundred extra points for pulling off one of these stylized kills, that could be a fairly cool reward. The problem with this though, and it's really gonna depend on how the community would react to it, is would it have a negative impact on the gameplay? The thing about divvying out more points for doing certain actions is that that is an incentive to do that action more. So as soon as you reward more points for getting uh, jet kills with an RPG, you're going to see more people trying to shoot jets up in the sky. And you're going to see more people run around exclusively with the RPG with just the hope that they might get lucky enough to see that huge XP or points fly across their screen. If you don't believe me, just look at the bolt action rifles in the game. DICE has already come out and admitted that that headshot bonus or that long range headshot bonus with the bolt action rifle was a bad game design. It promotes people to not play the objective. I mean, this is the reason why you see on Operation Firestorm, recons camping on uh, the, the rim of the map on the mountainside because they're searching for that huge point value doesn't really enhance the teamwork that they've always been going for since the dawn of time with the Battlefield franchise. And so as soon as you start to implement a stylized point system, while it's gonna feel amazing for the guy that finally lands the RPG shot against an enemy jet, he's gonna feel amazing, points are gonna fly across the screen, I would much rather him have a larger incentive to use it appropriately, which is against enemy tanks and LAVs. I honestly think that the only incentive that you really need is the kill itself. I mean, if you see a, a low flying jet flying over and you're lucky enough to snipe it out of the sky, I don't really need any point value to fly across my screen personally. I think that's just the very act of killing him is reward enough. And while I definitely think that your heart is in the right place, why wouldn't we want to reward players for doing these very skillful actions on the battlefield? I think if you look at it from this angle, you'll realize while it probably wouldn't destroy teamwork at all, I'm sure people would still play relatively the same, you know that there is going to be a fair amount of people that are going to start going RPG primary, hoping for that huge XP bonus, and I think overall it would have a negative impact on the gameplay. The next question for today comes from Jeff, and it is, what are your thoughts about claymores in Battlefield 4? Personally, I find them to be a cheap way to get kills, and I wouldn't be saddened if DICE decided to nerf them. I am right there with you because I flat out despise the claymores in Battlefield 4, and while I understand that it does require a moderate amount of skill, there are gamers that know exactly where to place these things on the battlefield. Some of these people know the, the exact position to get those sneaky goddamn kills, but even still, it just annoys the hell out of me. And so I don't, I don't really know how DICE would be able to improve these little gadgets, or even if the community would want them to be improved. I mean, really, if you look back at pretty much every past Battlefield game, there has been some variant of the Claymore. This very fact pretty much tells me that either DICE really likes the idea of having this mechanic in the game, or the, the vast majority of the Battlefield community is right there with them, and there isn't enough complaints for them to justify removing it from the series. And so I guess I just need to buck up and understand that I'm a complete idiot and start to look out for these a little bit more. I think the reason why I struggle so much with Claymores is that first of all, a lot of people aren't running them to begin with, thank God, and so when 
you do come across them, you're not really looking out for them because it's not something that you see very often on the battlefield. But also, when I'm running around, I'm not looking down at ground level, I'm looking for my next victim. I, I'm, I'm being observant of my surroundings, looking for someone who's gonna shoot at me, and not for something that's down on the ground, which is exactly where the claymores are. And so I guess what it really just comes down to is that I just need to stop sucking. I, I, I need to be more observant of my surroundings. I, I, it's, it's seriously embarrassing how often I die to these things. It's, it's shameful, I shame and bring dishonor to my family. And if there were servers out there that could just flat out disable these things, Honestly, I would be much more likely to run on those simply because I despise this gadget with a fiery passion. Uh, but let me know what you think about this gadget. Do you think it adds some nice value into the game? Do you use them constantly to cover your flanks? Or are you like me and think that they are the spawn of Satan and you wouldn't be all that sad if they were removed? Let me know down below. The next question for today comes from Christopher and it is, I constantly hear from YouTubers and other well above average players that they want to push the game in more of a skill based direction. They are always saying to nerf or remove noob weapons such as the mortar, airburst, UCAV, lock on missiles, and the AC-130, etc. I would just like to point out that not everyone who plays Battlefield 4 is uber elite hacksers awesome. I would agree with you. I believe pushing Battlefield in an even more skill based direction would only make the game more fun for the top tier of players and make it less enjoyable for everyone else. What are your thoughts? I definitely see where you're coming from, and to some extent, I would agree with you. Not everything that's added into the game needs to be designed or balanced around competitive play. It's fine to have some wonky gadgets in the game. I mean, that's really, that's the reason why DICE put in the Phantom Bow. It serves no purpose. It is meant to be a gimmick and it was designed to be a gimmick. I may disagree with that decision, but they have every right to add in these little cool little gadgets and gizmos into the game to add some flair and some variety and to cater to the more of the casual players who's just looking for these really cool moments to have. The problem that I have though with the things that you brought up is that the UCAV and the AC-130 for example are just flat out annoying to fight against. The thing about most combat in Battlefield is that as long as you played it right and you were the one with the most skill and you thought it out correctly, you're the one that's going to come out on top or survive the situation. You see a tank rolling on in, Probably a good time to duck behind cover if you're playing as the assault class and just to get the hell out of there. You see a sniper on a rooftop, might be a good time to start do dodging and weaving and making yourself a harder target. These are all things that you can react to, and honestly, that makes for a good, a good game design. Not only does it require the person who is trying to kill you to react to what's going on, but you're reacting to the same situation and it's bringing in a nice dynamic. As soon as you bring in a UCAV mechanic into the equation, you throw out everything that people have been accustomed to having that reactionary gameplay because you can't react. Is it, as soon as it's flying towards you, yes, I know that some of you will argue, oh, you can maybe duck into a building or you can duck behind some cover and, and stay alive. But let's be honest, most maps, you don't have that option. Even if you're playing smart, you can't react to it. And so you die in a frustrating way because it took that control away from you. Same is true for the AC-130. Doesn't hit very hard, but if you're on Giants of Karelia, Gullmud Railways, you're moving from objective to objective, no infantry or tanks are around you, but all of a sudden you get peppered by a thing up in the sky that's a million miles away. It just sucks. And so I think it's for that very reason why a lot of people in the Battlefield community find these things to be very annoying because everything else in the game allows you to react, but these two things specifically take away that interaction and you just die in a very, very frustrating way. And so while I do agree with you that not everything in the game needs to be balanced around competitive play, there can be these very unique or flair-like things in the game. I honestly, the, the examples that you gave, I find just to be poor game design. The next question for today comes from Max, and it is, what do you think about different designs for the American, Russian, and Chinese ammo boxes and med bags? If you find one, you could tell if there is an enemy around or not. I love this idea. I mean, I'm all for giving the player more information at their fingertips as long as they're observant enough to know what to look for. If all of a sudden you come across a bunch of Chinese ammo boxes down on the ground because they have that unique look to them, might be a good idea to tap on the brakes because you're playing as the US and you might be in for a, a little bit of a firefight. I think that's great. I mean, I'm always 
for giving the subtle hints to the players as long as they understand what's going on around them and they can use those visual and audio cues to their advantage. The only problem that we run into, and this is probably the reason why it will never happen for Battlefield 4, or maybe even not for a future Battlefield game, is that it would require more development time. Not only do they have to make the ammo boxes and the med bags all look like what they are, they, they have to make sure that people can identify what their functionality is just at a quick glance, but then they also have to make them feel unique enough from all of the other factions to make that distinction not impossible by any means. I mean, they've done it with all of the different uniforms for all the classes and for each faction, so it's definitely possible, and I know that DICE is definitely capable of doing something like this, but it would require development time. And so while personally I love the idea, I am 100% on board with the concept, because this would be more of a way to polish the game and isn't something game-breaking, I'm having a hard time seeing DICE take the time to actually implement something like this in Battlefield 4. It could be something that we see in a future Battlefield game, but only if they tackle the other huge things that they want to accomplish. Hopefully the netcode. They better nail the netcode in the next Battlefield game. If they're able to do all that and they have the time to add in this nice flair, this nice polish to the game, I am 100% on board. Solid suggestion. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Once again, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.